Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. Today I apologize, but we're going to have a sort of like a Zoom uh, layout uh, for the stream, uh, just because um, we are going to talk about uh, Scrivener and I really need uh, Scrivener to be on, on the main window, but I also want you guys to have direct eye-to-eye -eye contact with me, okay? So, what I want to do is I want to show you how amazing Scrivener is to manage files and documents in qualitative research. In qualitative research, you know, there, there are just a lot of files that we collect while we are in the field. And some of these can be super, uh, super uh, useful. Now, what most people do, and I, I did in the past is, um, you know, I'll show you, is we just keep an Excel uh, spreadsheet, right? Something like this, okay? That basically, you know, has dates, document, uh, document names, what it is, and then you, you, you can add whatever columns you want, okay? And so, you know, this is not super useful because I, I you know, I have this here, I, I, I can't see my documents. If I need to write notes, I can't write notes, um, you know, it's just a list, basically. Now, Scrivener, you know, which, you know, I've been telling you it's a great piece of software to, to, to do writing, is actually amazing for this as well. And this is what I want to share with you today, okay? With a, with a specific case, with a specific example. So let's go to Scrivener and open the file, okay? So, as you know, Scrivener is divided into two parts, the draft where you write your text and the research that takes any file that you want um, to, to, to write, that you need to, to write your text, right? So this can be any, any document, any type of document that you have from your field work, and it can take as many documents as you want. Now, that is already a huge advantage, which is you literally have one file that you can put on a USB, on an external drive, whatever, with all of your documents in one file. Okay, Can you, basically you, if you have your, your paper, uh, you, you know, you can have your, your NVivo or qualitative data analysis file, your Scrivener file for documents and your Scrivener file for your thesis or your paper. And that's three files in a USB stick that has like this entire complex research project. Everything is there, right? How amazing is that? So, so basically the way you do this is you just import your documents into, into, into Scrivener, right? So as you know, this is like super easy to do. So I can just, uh, just open something from, a, uh, you know, from, from my book, you know, you, you just, you just put it here. There you go. Okay. As easy as that, right? So it's super easy to drag documents into, into Scrivener. Scrivener allows you to, um, to, to sort these documents in, in folders if you want, if you don't, you don't have to. Uh, here I, I, I sorted them in, at, in different organizational levels or team, sector, and unit. You don't have to do this, but you can, okay? Now, why is Scrivener so good for this? Well, let me introduce you, my dear friends, to Scrivener's amazing, amazingly customizable outliner mode. There you go. Okay. There you go. Here's Scrivener outliner mode. Uh, let me just delete this because I want to show you this in, in uh, when, when we do the, the examples. Okay. So in outliner mode, I still see all of my documents. Right. But then I have a bunch of columns, right? So I have a label column, a status column, a keyword column, but the amount of columns that you can put here is just unlimited, right? So if I go here, view and outline, look at this. Modify date, word count, character count, total word count, and so on. You can tell me, well, I can, I can put this in, in uh, Excel. Yes, you can, but you have to do the total word count by hand. You have to, whenever you modify the document, you have to modify the modified date. Um, we have, you have to enter the created date by hand. Uh, you know, I mean, the whole thing, right? The whole thing. So this, 
automatically, automatically, so let's, let's look at this, right? So this automatically inputs data about documents. So, you, you know, you basically, you, well, I had to write, you know, document title, uh, uh, created date and, and, and so on. In Scrivener, it's drag and drop, drag and drop, right? I can, you know, imagine I have 3000 individual documents from my, my field work. Okay. So I spent weeks, you know, a few hours a day doing that Excel spreadsheet with Scrivener. It's instantaneous. You drag the documents and then everything is here, right? Um, total word count. See documents that don't have word counts, uh, don't, don't, you know, don't have word counts. Documents that have word counts, so it's like this text, so Excel doesn't have word counts, PowerPoint doesn't have, but this has word counts, so it will it will take it, right? It also gives you total total words for the folder. So and sometimes this is useful, you know, if you want to report that you have an extensive data set, right? So you automatically build a table that has all the information. Uh, that you may want to need about your documents. Now, the amazing thing is that this is all customizable and, and you can customize it as you want. That's the one thing. The other thing that I'll show you after is how this can link to any other document outside your project and how the, you can have amazing visualization options. Okay. So let's first look at customization because the customization here is insane. Okay. So I'll show you, you, you look at the, the inspector okay? and I'll, I'll pick the a document. Okay. So an inspector, as you know, has a synopsis and has notes. Now this is already good because I can go on the synopsis and say, uh, this document is the, has, is, um, the units presentation presentation and it has amazing quotes good okay now i can also make uh, notes about uh, the document and as you know this is all, are always exportable if you want okay now what i want to show you is this the metadata tab okay this is amazing. Why? Because in the metadata tab, you can basically add any classification data to your document that you want. So for example, imagine that you want to anonymize your files. Okay. So I have, I created a, a, a metadata field called confidentiality treatment. And I can do it done, not done. Now you tell me, you know, I mean, why do I have, why, why, you know, do you have this not done here? Can I do something about it? Of course you can. So you can go here to edit, you see, and I can say the non item title is actually done as well. Okay. So you see all of this. Well, I probably shouldn't, 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 shouldn't have done that. So, NA. So I'll put NA, okay? So there you go. So done, not done, you know, and as you, you know, and this is also, remember, uh, also a work tracker, you know, a, a task manager, project manager, right? So I know, you know, if I, I, I say, okay, I have a few minutes, I'm going to, to work on my, on anonymizing documents, okay? So, I can do, I can do this. I have my list. I split the screen and I see, okay, I'll sort by, uh, uh, by confidentiality. And, and these are off because they're in different folders, of course. Okay. So I'll see, okay, this is not done. Okay. So this is not done. Let's see what, what is not done. Okay. This one. Let's put this one not done. Okay. Just, just as an example, this one is not done. Okay. So what I do is I 
open in the right editor and here's the document and I can work on this in the editor and say okay I'm done it's it's done okay so I move it to done okay then um, let's see this is not done either so I, I can go here I open on the right editor right and I work on the document and then I'm done it's done see so task management automatic automatic that's insane document list um, and obviously I can uh, you know I, I can uh, remove uh, whatever you know so if I'm just doing the the confidentiality I can remove everything right and uh, just have the uh, the the confidentiality okay see so that just, that just gives me like a, a really nice list that I can keep checking to, to, do, to do my work, okay? Now, creating metadata is uh, super easy. You just click here and you say, I'm going to add a new one. And let's say, um, let's, um, you know, talk about type of document, okay? And then I can have text where I just enter whatever I want, a checkbox, which is check or unchecked, list or date. So in list, I can, I can put uh, text presentation spreadsheet. Okay. Now I just add it here, type of document, and I can go spreadsheet, present, spreadsheet, presentation, you know, and so on and so forth. And, 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 and I can list um, I can list all of my documents, right? How amazing is that? That you can, you know, that you can just simply add whatever custom meta metadata you want to um, uh, to your files, and, and as easily as this. Obviously, can you do this in Excel? Yes, but the, I mean, the key thing here is that Scriver does this automatically in Excel. It, it doesn't do this automatically, right? And so, even if you can do this in Excel, first, have you ever done this in Excel? Maybe not. Why? Because it is a little bit more challenging than just the simple way that you can do it in Scriver. Then you have keywords. You know, so you can enter keywords, uh, change management, leadership, uh, transition. Okay. Uh, let's see, technology. Okay. And I can add keywords to uh, to my document, right? So I'll put here, I'll put keywords, right? And I, I, you know, for example, I can go to this document and I go to keywords, and I put. Uh, oops, wait, wait. I think I can grab. Yeah, I can just drag them, right? As easy as that. Look at this. How amazing is this? Right, and you can see if if you're careful with uh, the colors that you choose, um, you can actually this can actually be like uh, super cool for analysis as well. I also want to show you something something really cool, which is you can actually uh, make a hierarchy of keywords. So I can move move this into here, and actually move this into here, and this, and I can move this up. Okay, so, you know, this is almost like pre-coding or, or open coding that you, that you can do. Um, and you have this super nice uh, color code here, right? So you can do that. Um, and uh, everything else is customizable. So, you know, you see the labels, you can, you, you can customize your labels. Uh, so I can put, um, you know, um, uh, not... Uh, critical useful not useful delete imagine okay and obviously I can just say the useful is the default so if I don't put anything all of them will be useful okay so as you can see now if I have label right and I obviously can drag this around as well you know I can put delete for example that, that I just added okay same thing with status. So status, I, I have it here. So 
I'll delete one and, and, and add it so for you to see how easy it is. So encode it. Okay. So there you go. So if I add the status here, okay, I can have open coded, uncoded. Okay. So look, I mean, and, and for example, this is, a, is again project management, right? It allows you to check which uh, files are, uh, are are coded or uncoded. Obviously, you know, these are not field notes or interviews. Those are in your qualitative analysis software. These are the files that are not in qualitative analysis software that have some data, but that you do not want to like fully full on code, right? Now, um, so that's that's the, the, the columns and, and the data, okay? Now, I want to show you something that is also super cool. And again, something that you cannot do in Excel and is amazing in Scrivener. Okay. So let me delete this one. Okay. So imagine I'm looking, I have this presentation and I know this presentation is, um, let me just take this out. Sorry. Okay. I know this presentation is this presentation here plus this data here okay so the the only thing i need to do is i just add this here and this here notice that i i, I can see them in the inspector window you know and i know okay this presentation is linked to this okay this data Notice, I only did this once in this presentation, right? That I, I linked to this data, but now th these documents are linked. So when I looked at this data, I know which, which presentations they were, they, they were used for, right? Let me take this out of there. Okay, so can you see the enormous possibilities of this? Now, just want to show you one thing about, uh, you know, coding and management, and then we'll go into visualization, which is, Scrivener accepts external documents. So imagine you have a folder with uh, memos, okay? So what you can do is you can add an external file bookmark and let's say it's this one, okay? That ha you see the memo here, but it is not in Scrivener, okay? I see the content here, but it is not in Scrivener. Obviously I cannot add it because it is not in Scrivener. Okay, imagine you don't like the title and you have to call it something else. I can actually call it memo one. Okay, so I see the content. How amazing is that, right? It's not here, so I can't edit, but I see the comment and uh, I can change the name. If I click here, then the file, the external file opens. You see, I haven't changed the name of the file, just it's labeled in Scrivener. And obviously then if I open the text document, I can, I can edit it. Right. So just, just, just for you to see, I save, I think if I reload, yeah. So you see, um, live updating of the document. So really amazing. Now let's talk visualization. We've been talking about the, the, uh, the, the outliner here and just notice that you can then work on this folder by folder if you want. Okay. But there is a, a, another super cool visualization, which is the, uh, to manage documents, which is the cork board. Okay. So I'll show you how it works. So you have the card work here. Okay. And look, so I have the status across. Okay. I have the status across. I have keywords here. Okay. So and if I want, I can go here and um, you know, I have the, I, I have the keywords here, right? I can also remember just have them floating here, right? If I want a, a little bit, of uh, a legend okay here and and on this side i have the i have the i have the label okay on this side i have the 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 document uh label okay now this is also customizable customizable obviously so i can um show keyword colors or height so status stamp show label uh, uh, colors along the edges okay or not and right now 
this is, uh, you know, this is sort of range in a grid. And if I move this, I will move the documents there. Okay. But imagine like, um, you know, you're sort of like looking at this and the keywords and you say, you know what, I want to do some, uh, um, you know, I, I need to think uh, with these documents. Okay. So what you can do is you can move this to free form. Okay. You see, this is now moving without any impact on the document structure. Okay. And I say, okay, so, um, let me group together the ones with, uh, let's see the, the keywords again, the ones that are about technology. Okay. So this is this color, right? Technology is this green color. Okay. So this one is about technology. This one is not about technology. See how cool that is. Forget about it. Right. I want to see the ones that are coded and the ones that are not coded. So I can move. Okay. These are coded. This is, this is not coded. Okay. Now, unfortunately this, you have to do this at the, at the folder level. So just be mindful that when, if you need to work on the corkboard like this, just be mindful that, uh, you know, you cannot look at the individual documents within the folder. So you can just put, if you need to do this for the whole documents, move them around, just put them in all in the same folder or all under, under research. Okay. See, by the way, notice that synopsis of images are uh, the image itself. Okay. There you go. How good is that? Right. So all in all, why should you use Scrivener? to manage your documents. First, Scrivener builds your document database automatically with all of the data, file names, uh, creation date, modify, modify date, what type of document it is. It does that automatically. Secondly, Scrivener has a very simple and intuitive classification scheme that allows you to add whatever categories, whatever type of fields you want. Okay. And like in a spreadsheet, it, everything is sortable and, uh, and selectable and, uh, and can be uh, filtered. Okay. You can add them as much as you want. It, and it does have uh, specific fields such as label and status that offer you this amazing visualization that allows you to uh, work on your documents on a table format, if that's what you want, or in a more visual uh, format, if that's more helpful, like I, I'm doing here. Finally, Scrivener allows you to establish links between documents, right? It allows you to establish links between documents that are inside your project, but also outside your project, like we saw the, uh, this, this memo here. And even with external documents, you can view them and that view is updated in real time. So overall, I think you definitely should use Scrivener for this because there's no tool like it for uh, managing documents in a large scale qualitative project. Hope this was helpful guys. If uh, there's anything about Scrivener or research that uh, you want me to discuss, uh, I will. Um, small uh, note at, at the end. I just want to tell you that um, I didn't think I did a very good job in the first version of this video. So I decided to, to record the second version.